Good morning, Newport. I still can't believe I'm sitting in an actual studio with a live studio audience. I appreciate you all getting up early with me. If you'd like to come join the fun for our live studio recordings, visit our website and become a supporter of the show. I can promise you laughs and uh, perhaps an open bar. This morning we have an important theme to explore with you, campaign financing. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's remember one of the more morbid events ever announced at a city council meeting. Oasis is hosting a special screening of the Netflix original film Endgame, followed by a discussion on the topic of end of life care. The New York Times Film Review stated this is a quote, an intimate look at how doctors, nurses, and patients at two San Francisco Bay Area hospitals cope with death. Either they really do know their audience or this was a grave mistake. <laughs> now, to the young people who aren't attending the Senior Center movie night, you can now follow along with Good Morning Newport on all social media channels. Speaking of social media, City Councilman Will O'Neill took some time out of his precious Saturday afternoon recently to tweet about our show. It appears he's not a fan. O'Neill tweeted out a screenshot showing that we took a donation from local political action committee lying in the sand. Apparently, he thinks that's a bad thing, but we're proud to let you know we took money from a grassroots organization committed to holding Newport Beach politicians accountable. In fact, this whole show is underwritten by viewers like you. If you like what we do and you want to see it continue, click the link below to sign up for our Patreon page. The only special interest we owe any favors to is you, the citizens. Now, because he opened this can of worms, we took a look at Mr. O'Neill's campaign finance statements, and it appears he's taking money from several groups tied to high-density real estate development in our city. Wonder why Councilman O'Neill was so concerned about a citizen watchdog group giving money to our show. Hmm. You see, it takes a lot of money to get elected in Newport Beach. Some estimate you need to raise $90,000 to run a successful campaign. And when you need that much money, you end up owing special favors to the special interests who gave you the cold hard cash. One of the biggest campaign financers that should really grab your attention in this city is multimillionaire Howard Amundsen Jr. Amundsen just recently donated $41,000 to an independent expenditure committee working to reelect Scott Piotr, Kevin Muldoon, and Mayor Duffy Duffield, and has contributed over $200,000 to the last three elections combined. Amundsen is another shadow string puller whose other big money donations go to anti-gay and climate change disputing causes. In fact, Amundsen's mentor was a man who believed the Holocaust death rate was exaggerated and advocated for the death penalty for homosexuality. Now, if those kind of allegiances don't make you question why, in God's name our city council members are associated with this man, here's something that should concern Newport Beach's more conservative populace. Amundsen is a huge proponent of high density development and is attempting to influence the city council to allow more high rise condominium development that would forever change Newport Beach. It's not just this Amundsen fellow influencing our city. From the 2014 election until today, Duffy and Piotr have accepted over $200,000 from developers and special interests. Wonder who they'll side with when it comes time to vote on some new development projects in the city. We've been talking a lot about where Newport Beach City Council candidates are getting their money from. Joining us today is a citizen activist who does a lot of work examining what irresponsible things our city council spends money on. He's currently running for city council to make major changes in city fiscal policy. You may know him from his Facebook page, Mike Glenn Save Newport, or his website, SaveNewport.com. Without further ado, here is the man, the local legend, Mike Glenn. Take it away, Riley. Thank you, Alex. I'm here with Mike Glenn, founder of Mike Glenn Saves Newport and a candidate for the Newport Beach City Council this election. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thank you for having me. Now, you're running against Diane Dixon. Correct. And you have a long history of why you're running having to do with her. Can you tell us uh, what happened in the past that made you want to run against her now in this election? Sure. So uh, about seven years ago is when I became active in uh, local politics. So I started going to these meetings about the doc tax, and of course there's not just one item, there's not one meeting with the doc tax, there's 30 other items on the agenda. So I figured, okay, well I'm gonna listen and see what's going on with these other items, and I, I can't believe they're proposing this, I'm gonna go to those meetings, and then I would go to those meetings, and ad infinitum, and I'm going to all the meetings, and I'm an activist. So that's kind of how I got started, and I decided in 2014 that I was going to run. Um, and there was, an, there was somebody else that was already filed to run, which was Joe Stapleton, and then the third person to file was Diane Dixon. Diane Dixon pulled both of us aside and said, why are you guys running? The conversation that she had with me was that she was a fiscal conservative, she was out to reduce taxes, balance the budget, get rid of the dock tax, 
um, and keep regulations from hindering businesses. I said, great, okay, go ahead and do it. I, if somebody else is going to do the job, let them do the job. Turns out you can't trust politicians. <laughs> so she got in office and in the last four years, she's raised taxes, raised spending, raised the debt. She's uh, forced the downtowner out of business, tried to seize property rights, uh, tried to shut the bars down at 11 p.m. Uh, through the seizure of property rights. We had a jet pack in the harbor that used to, you know, the flying jet pack, and she shut that one down. She's trying to shut down the dog beach that's been there for 101 years between Newport and Huntington. And it is certainly not what I was promised. So this time around, I'm here to hold her accountable for her votes. Wow. There's only two types of people that run for office. You're either pissed off or you're power hungry. Is it safe to say you are pissed off? I am pissed off. Um, All right. the, the city is bleeding money. It, it's com a complete lack of responsibility that's going on in, in our current city council. The, the regulations are increasing, taxes are increasing, spending's increasing, debt is increasing. It's a train that has got no brakes on it. And somebody needs to get in there and really grab this thing by the reins and set it right. I thought that with the council that we elected in 2014, the message that they ran on was that they were going to do just that. They've, they've accelerated the process. Tell us, what is the most absurd thing that Newport Reach spends money on? How about a dog catcher that makes $180,000 a year in total compensation? Wow, in what department? Uh, the, they're actually deputized as police officers, but they're dog catchers. They're called animal control officers. Do we have multiple of these? We have about five of them. 180? Yes, I mean, 180. Now, because they're deputized as police officers, they only work for 30 years, and then they retire with 90% of their base pay for the rest of their lives. Now, that base pay, this, their retirement fund, is not even funded. It's called an unfunded pension liability, and that's a big catch, catchphrase that everybody likes to throw around, but nobody seems to grasp that its actual meaning is that these these pensions are unfunded. That's if I were to hire you and I would pay you $100 a year, and I guarantee you that when you retire, I'll pay you $80 a year for the rest of your life, but I never save for it. And then you retire and I say, uh-oh, what am I going to do? Debt hits. So you multiply that by the entire city of Newport Beach, none of the pensions are ever funded. It's a big mess. To get out from underneath CalPERS, it's $1.3 billion. If we're making 250 million, but we've got debt on that one thing alone of 1.3 billion, we are way over our heads. Sounds like I need to be a dog catcher. <laughs> exactly. It's not the fault of the employees, it's the politicians that made these promises that they simply can't keep. So the unfunded pension, who is gonna pay for that? That is the big question. This is a problem not just statewide, this is a problem nationally. So in about seven years, Newport Beach will not be able to make its payment obligations, meaning we will go bankrupt. Really, there are three options. A judge could rule that these poor souls that worked all of their lives for a pension are no longer entitled to that pension, which is a horrible outcome for our pensioners and people that have dedicated their entire lives for service for their community. Uh, the second one is we come to a compromise forehand and say, look guys, we can't make it, can we adjust things here? Can we adjust things there? And the third one is that a judge says, no, you're, you're on the hook. And that, that means we're gonna need to come up with the money. We have to start selling city assets like parks and things like that, which is a horrid idea. Or the federal government comes in and bails out the entire country, in which case we're gonna have hyperinflation and all that jazz that comes along with it and the questioning of the dollar baseline. These are, these are huge catastrophic problems and Newport Beach is a big piece of those in Orange County. Now selling the city assets mm -hmm. is something the current city council seems to have been doing to try to make some money, or at least attempted to with the Lido House. Right now the current tenant is on that piece of property for about one twelfth of market value. What if somebody were to cut your rent into one twelfth? That would be fantastic. Um, unfortunately for the city, that's what we're locked into for 99 years. So if we were to sell that land now, there's only one buyer and that's the tenant. Why but, can't we rent the Lido House property for its market value? Well now, because we're locked in for 99 years, the prior council. How did, how did they get such a good deal? The prior council. And if you see the campaign contributions, my opponent being one of them, um, you will see that they know how to make the city work for them. <laughs> so corruption. 
uh, I would say that it's certainly questionable that somebody getting such a screaming deal donates thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to campaign contributions. So I see myself not just as an activist, but as a translator of council speak into layman's terms. Yeah, I mean, we can really relate with that here at Good Morning Newport. Yeah. Um, so much of everything we're doing is trying to just translate all of the stuff that's happening at council right. into something that's easy and fun to understand. You guys do a tremendous job, by the way, too. Thank yeah. you, thank you. <laughs> and we take inspiration from you. You're the, you've been doing this longer than we have. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so it's, it's an honor to have you here on the show. We wish you the best of luck in your campaign. And if there's anything you want to say to our audience before you go, now's the time. Yeah, uh, so I've got a flyer here. If you guys are interested in knowing more about my particular race or just knowing the, uh, knowing the voting history, uh, the record rather than just the rhetoric of Diane Dixon, uh, she always says, like any politician says, she wants to be fiscally responsible and uh, she wants to uh, increase transparency and public safety, of course. Uh, match the record to the rhetoric. Go to dumpdixon.com and see what she's actually voted on. Uh, what you'll see is a, a simple printout of this. You can download the PDF. It's two pages front and back. Uh, pretty crisp reading. And I uh, hope you enjoy. And thank you for paying attention. And thank you. Good morning, Newport. Thanks for coming on the show, Mike. Absolutely. Thank you. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Mike, for joining the show, despite us poking fun at you in previous episodes. We do it to everyone. Coming up next week. Oh, hold on. The tip line's ringing. Good morning, Newport tip line. You're telling me Aaron Harp got triggered by Susan Skinner again? Oh, and he got triggered by Jim Mosier this time too? We're not gonna pay for his therapy bill. <laughs> this is Alex Crawford saying, from Newport Coast to the River Jetties, from the back bay to the wedge, good morning, Newport.